Ruby Carpero Casamiro had just had a normal C-section. She gave birth to a beautiful young daughter. This was eight, uh, September 23rd. But as they wheeled her out of the delivery room back to her private room, her heart suddenly stopped. She went unconscious. She went into full cardiac arrest. Uh, Dr. Jordan Nur, her anesthesiologist, immediately intubated her and got a machine breathing for her. He called a code and about a dozen doctors and nurses crowded in, into her room and for two hours they were giving her life-saving uh, CPR and cardiac uh, treatment. Uh, worst of all is her heart was erratic and uh, uh, what was worst was when the heart would beat but it wasn't pumping blood to the rest of the body. For 45 minutes straight, they used compressions on her chest to try to get her heart working normally. But after two hours, they gave up. They said there's no more hope. So they called in her family to say goodbye. As the family went back out to the waiting room, they fell down on their knees with a couple nurses with them and cried out to God, please, for a different outcome. While the family was praying desperately in the waiting room, the doctors stopped pumping her chest, and it, it was time to call the time of death. Ruby had the world by the tail. She had two beautiful daughters. She had a brand new girl, when suddenly her heart stopped completely. I'm sure you've had something bad happen to you. Pain knocks on everybody's door. Uh, maybe you started a job, and it was a wonderful job, and then the company downsized. You were out of a job, the, the job you thought you might have for the rest of your life. Or maybe you were doing great and everything was working in your life and you got injured. Or you got sick and you were sidelined. Or maybe uh, your pain came when the doctors told you your test was positive. And all of a sudden, all the dreams you had were down the drain. You realized that your dreams to see your kids grow up and get married and grow old with your husband uh, or your wife and, and live a good long life, you weren't going to be there to see all that. Or maybe God took a child or a mate or a friend of yours and you're thinking, God, why did you give me that wonderful relationship just to take it away? We've all had painful experiences. Why don't you stop the video for a moment? Why don't you just share around your group a painful experience each of you has had? This may take a while, so that's okay. Pain knocked on the door of a woman in the Old Testament. We find her story in 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, this is the third in a series of messages uh, called, Have You Seen God's Supernatural Power Lately? We're talking about, can we see God's supernatural power in our lives? Should we? And how can we do it when pain knocks on our door? Uh, so for our instruction, we're looking to the prophet of Elisha, who performed many miracles. Uh, 2 Kings 4, verse 8, One day Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. She was a wealthy woman who lived in Shunem. Uh, that's a little bit east of modern-day Haifa in northern Israel. Elisha came through that town. She invited him for a meal, and she made a room so he could stay there anytime he wanted. Uh, to thank her for her hospitality, he asked her, what can I do for you? Well, her husband was old. She had no son. So she asked for a, new son, for a baby boy. Uh, Elisha prayed, and a year later, she gave birth to a son. And we read about him. The child grew. And one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. My head, my head, he said to his father. His father told a servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid on him on the bed of the man of God and then shut the door and went out. 
She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly in return. Why go to him today, he asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. It's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in a distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, here's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything's all right, she said. Uh, she knew that Gehazi didn't have the faith that she needed, and so she just brushed right by him and went straight for Elisha. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone. She's in bitter distress. But the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord, she said? Didn't I tell you, don't raise my hopes? She says, why do you give me a son? And I fall in love with him, and now he's gone. He's broken my heart. But the child's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So Elisha got up and followed her. When Elisha reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on the couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hand. As he stretched himself out upon the boy, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha rose and prayed some more. He was walking around the room. and Elisha uh, turned away and walked back and forth in the room, then got on the bed and stretched out upon him one more time. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground. And when she took her son, she went out. God brought this woman's miracle son back to life. This is one of the, <clears throat> one of the most amazing miracles in the Old Testament. What can we learn from this? Like this woman, we all face painful events in our lives. Maybe you're not a believer. It could be that you're not a believer because of a painful experience that happened in your life. Uh, we have to learn how to respond when pain knocks on our door. Uh, what can we learn about experiencing God's supernatural power in our lives, particularly when pain knocks on our door? So I'd like you just to uh, talk about this among your group. You might talk about how you responded when pain knocked on your door. Did you do it well or not so well? Uh, if you have your journals, I'd love for you to get into those and share your answers if people have come prepared. If people haven't come prepared, just, just read them right on the spot. You got a Bible, got a cell phone, look them up and, and find the answers. And then pray for each other. People have shared some painful things and why don't you pray for each other for those and make your requests specific. Pray for something that by next week you can see whether God answered to help them in their painful situation. Have a great discussion.